The following is an excerpt from Disc 12, Stories 3 and 4, Volume 2 of In the Room with Milton H. Erickson, M.D. To purchase these DVDs, and I hope you'd like to, please go to MiltonEricksonDVDs.com. Thank you. You wrote me some time ago, didn't you? I did indeed, and I uh, have some greetings from Guy Pettit, whom you might recall, also from New Zealand. How much experience have you had? Sit down. About three years, I would think. I work in a general hospital in Wellington, teach in the medical school. Would you take seats with him? Yes. Sorry to be late. Well, I think everybody's happy you're late. They all have a chance to get a good, clear look at you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if they weren't late, then I could look at them. That's right. That's your luck. Now, how much experience have you had in hypnosis? I use it routinely about three or four times per week in a general hospital practice in a psychiatric unit. Have you ever been in trance yourself? Yes, I have. By whom? By a psychiatrist in Australia. His name? His name is Farnbeck, although I don't think you'd have met him. His name is Farnbeck. I was at the last International Congress in Melbourne with Martin Orne, Fred Frankel, and yeah. Jack Hilgard and others there. Yeah. Being a stranger here, you're very much under scrutiny. Are you in a trance or not? Am I in a trance now? Mm -hmm. I don't believe I am. You heard that, didn't you, Carol? <laughs> Some prehistory to that comment. Mm -hmm. There's some prehistory to that comment. Oh yes, indeed. <laughs> and what would you like to have me do for you today? I thought that you'd ask. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that what has impressed me most about my contact with your work and through the work of the Rossies has been your, what I choose to call intuition in psychotherapy especially. So I suppose I'd like to approach that a little more than I've been able to in the past. Previously you were just a voice coming out of a tape cassette, you see and words on a page, but now I have something, something more as well. Yeah.
That's the you come from New Zealand. I do. What do you know about Australians? I'm an Australian, in fact. I, I've been working in New Zealand for some years. So I say that I come from New Zealand, but in fact I was born in Australia. What do New Zealanders say about Australians? <laughs> Much the same as, Amer as Canadians think of Americans, I think. Now, do you know the difference between a buffalo and a bison? Yes, a bison is what you wash your hands in. <laughs> Yes. You are an educated Australian. <laughs> There's a few of us around. <laughs> well, you're an edu educated American with a with a setup like that. <laughs> are you sure you're not in trance? I know your work well enough not to be sure of that. <laughs> you learn that at a great distance. What do you think a trance is? I think a trance is highly focused attention. Highly focused attention. Somehow, I'm not sure how, coexisting with relaxation. I used to be much more specific in my definition that I learned respect. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Over convenience sake. I like to divide human behavior into conscious behavior and unconscious behavior. Now, most of our learnings are made consciously. Now, we meet so many learnings that we can't keep them in a conscious state of awareness because there are too many of them. And so, and drop into another level of awareness I call the unconscious and thus I divide the behavior into conscious and unconscious behavior and the unconscious <clears throat> is made up of conscious learning and experiential learning and in our conscious behavior, we use the end results of most of our conscious learnings. <clears throat> 